Hi folks, Valentine's Day is just around the corner and I have it sorted. If you are trying to impress your Valentine's this Valentine's Day, I have five chocolate recipes that are bound to impress your loved ones. So here they come. If you've mastered chocolate rice crispy squares, the next step up is chocolate biscuit cake. It was a big part of my childhood and it is so simple to make. Only a few ingredients in a bowl mixed together with melted chocolate. You can't go wrong. Hi folks, today I am going to show you how to make a chocolate biscuit cake. Now, if you haven't come across a chocolate biscuit cake, it's basically chocolate, golden syrup, butter, all wrapped around biscuits, Maltesers, wonderful, crunchy and sweet things, resulting in one of those sorts of cakes that nobody confesses to loving, but they actually do. Now, it's very, very easy to make. If you made Rice Krispie treats when you were growing up, this is kind of in the same vein. So we're going to start off with some butter in a pan. And as you can see, it's quite a lot of butter going in here. I'm gonna melt this down alongside some golden syrup. Now, if you can't get your hands on some golden syrup, especially if you're in the States, I think uh, some corn syrup will do the job. So we're gonna melt this down just to the point that that butter melts out. And I have a whole heap of chocolate going in here. And you could melt the chocolate over a bain-marie, but I'm actually gonna use the heat from the butter and the golden syrup to melt up a whole heap of dark chocolate but by all means use whatever chocolate you like and you can even make this with white chocolate. So there's plenty of options. Okay, while this is melting away and waiting for its chocolate glory, let's talk about the ingredients for this chocolate biscuit cake. I have a combination of things. I have some rich tea biscuits, which are sort of like a more compact digestive biscuit. I'm just gonna crack these in here and you kind of want nice chunky pieces in here. You're just looking for that dryness that's wrapped around that kind of richness. And it's a great thing for a kid's birthday party or even just eating by yourself from the bowl, it's totally up to you. Right, we've got butter melting, we've got golden syrup coming on. I'm gonna take this off the heat now. I'm going to pop it in this little bowl here and I'm gonna pop the chocolate straight in here to melt. And while that melts down, let's get back to our biscuit mixture. So to this, I wanna add a little bit of chew, a little bit of sweetness, and that comes from some dried cherries. For a little bit of sweet crunch, and you don't have to do this, but I really love the addition of Maltesers, or I don't know, what, what are they called in America? I can't remember what they're called in America, but anyway, these little malted chocolate balls. Put them on in there, and we're just gonna give that all a good toss up, just to get kind of mingled together. And at this point now, we should have a chocolate sauce that is ready to go, and you can just see how super glossy that chocolate is. And that definitely comes down to the fact that you've got the butter in there and you've got that golden syrup, which is gonna give you that richness into the sauce. So straight on in. This is the moment. That it all looks pretty darn good. This is the sort of moment that when I was making this as a kid, my aunt or my mom, basically whoever was letting me in the kitchen, would not let me lick the bowl and they would use the spatula until they got every last little bit and I'd never get to lick the bowl. It was really a sad time in my house. Right, all that chocolate in, and now it's just a case of giving it all a good mixture. This looks wonderful. We've got glossiness, we've got chocolatiness, and I have the tiniest little cake tin you ever could imagine that I've lined with a bit of parchment paper to allow myself to get this out easily enough. And now it's just a case of tumbling this in and pressing it nice and tight. And that's what I'm going to attempt to do so that the cameras can see what I'm doing by pushing it towards the camera like this, which is always really awkward, but this is what they make me do. So let's do it. Really awkward. Oh, God. Okay. You see? Oh, see, and it always ends up all over the counter. Come in. Come in here and see what's going on. So just scrape every last little bit out. And using the spatula, I just want to press this down until it's really nice and tight and compact. Okay, this is looking pretty good and now it is ready for some time in the fridge. We got chocolate cake, it has been into the fridge, it is set, I've taken it out. As you can see, it has lots of lumps and bumps and that's kind of okay with chocolate biscuit cake, but I do have a little way of finishing this off. It's a chocolate ganache and it starts off by melting some butter and bringing up some cream just to temperature. Okay, we're at a nice little simmering point. So I'm gonna take this off the heat. I'm gonna add my chocolate in here and just melt that chocolate through this sauce just until it becomes nice and smooth and whisk in a little bit of icing sugar. Okay. 
Oh my goodness, we are in business. Look how thick and glossy and chocolatey this is. And right now, I need to stop talking and get this over because this is where it's all about to go down. Chocolatey, oozy, gorgeousness. Pour the whole nine yards over the top and then just using a little offset spatula, get in there and just let it drip down the sides. I am sorry, but does that not look like the most beautiful little chocolate cake you ever did see? Now, this is pretty much all you need to do, but if you're feeling fancy, and if you've got loads of kids coming over for a birthday party, you gotta crack out the disco glitter. Look at this. Little bit of sugar pearls just going over the top. Now my friends, this is not high class baking. This is not high class patissier. This is chocolate biscuit cake and this is what my childhood was made of. I mean, look at that. It's ridiculously messy. It's ridiculously gaudy. But you know what? If you gave me that for my birthday, I'd be a happy man. Everybody needs a one bowl chocolate cake in your life. And if you have a friend like my pal, Sarah Carey from MarthaStewart.com, you are in business. This is an epic chocolate cake. You're gonna wanna make this one. Uh, we start with the sugar, one and a half cups. It's one and a half cups of flour. Okay, so all the dry ingredients going into yeah. one bowl. And some salt. Cocoa powder, okay. three quarters of a cup. Any particular cocoa powder you should be looking at? Well, we use Valrona, okay. um, which is a Dutch process cocoa. So this gives it a richer, deeper, darker color and flavor. See, this is the information. This is why I subscribe <sighs> to Everyday Food. It's oh so God, good. She knows it so all. Sweet. So cocoa powder, we've got yeah. all our dry ingredients. We're going baking powder. Baking powder, three quarters of a teaspoon. And then baking soda as well. And why the combination of baking soda and baking soda? Wow, you're asking all the right questions. Sorry, sorry. You're asking all, no, it's good. Oh, it's good. It's okay, all the right good. questions. Uh, baking soda is used in recipes that contain an acid, mm -hmm. and cocoa powder is an acid, as well as the liquid we're using is buttermilk, okay. and so we use baking soda as well. Sometimes I just use baking powder. Okay. And it works. You live dangerously like that. I do. Okay. Whisk this together. Okay, I whisk away. It's in. So now okay. you can put it down and then we put in everything, sort of all the wet ingredients go into okay. two eggs. Two eggs. Yeah. Will I crack away? Mm-hmm. Okay. You can put them in the bowl first if you want to, but it oh, doesn't matter. Proper way to do it is to put it in the bowl, but if you guys watch my channel, which Donald says you do, <laughs> I almost never do that. Okay, all straight in? Yeah, it can all go right in because okay. we're just going to mix it together. So, buttermilk? Yep, three okay. quarters of a cup. If you do buy buttermilk just for this recipe, yeah. you can make pancakes, you can make pound cakes, you can make all kinds of stuff. Wholemeal Irish soda bread. Um, yeah. Really good. Donald has a recipe, I bet. I bet <laughs> yeah. that was I bet that was like a throw to one of his other videos. <laughs> yeah. Water, water, uh, water. Water. Three water. quarters of a cup. Okay. And three tablespoons of safflower oil. A teaspoon of vanilla. Teaspoon, teaspoon. of vanilla. Okay. Oh, how is this gonna work? I don't I'll know. Do it over here. He can do it, he can do it, you guys. You know he can. You can believe in me. One teaspoon. <laughs> oh, are you gonna sing? No, let's not do that. Oh, that was really that. cute, I liked it. Thanks. Turn it on. Okay, I'm gonna start slow. Yeah. Okay, so, oh look at that! Right? It's like completely changed. Yeah. It's quite creamy and glossy. So it's a very thin batter. Okay. <laughs> there we go. We're good, we're good everyone. He did it. Uh -huh. Batter, we've got batter and it's quite loose. You did yeah. mention it Let was loose. Let me scrape just a little bit. So which will we go first? This How one? about that? Okay. I have the oven preheating to uh, 350. 350. Which you'll translate somehow. I think at 180 degrees Celsius. Yeah, I'd imagine so. Probably. for a cake. Yep. Divide the batter evenly. This goes in the oven, 350 for about 35 minutes. Cakes have come out of the oven, they have cooled. They have. And now it's exciting times because we are gonna make some frosting. So what do we need the to do? The best part. This is, um, this is our icing sugar and uh, some cocoa powder. So mix these together. Yeah. This is nicely mixed through, what's next? Um, I guess I can add the butter. Okay. Oh, here's special. Yeah, and then. Softened butter. Soft butter, one and a half sticks. So cream cheese. Six ounces. Okay, and, and white cream cheese richness, a little bit of tang, a little bit of je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi. It's like a combination between a cream cheese frosting and a regular confectioner okay. sugar frosting. That's what's going on Beautiful. here. Beautiful. Now comes the chocolate. This is a double chocolate situation. 
nine ounces of melted bittersweet chocolate. Oh, this looks good. Yeah. So chocolate uh, goes in. Chocolate. Feel free to lick your fingers because oh. you're going to want to. Mm -hmm. Donald's going to want to. Yum. All okay. Right. Oh, that nearly went well. Okay, great. Okay, it's Give it a on. little stir to get everything combined. Uh, we're going in with... Creme fraiche. Creme fraiche, please. Creme fraiche me, Sarah. I shall. Beautiful. Will you why, are we, why are we doing this accent now? I don't know. Don't you happen. started it. I, I don't even speak with an English accent. We have frosting. We okay. have chocolate cake. Let's go make a chocolate frosted cake. All right, so we're doing it right on the cake stand because okay. why not? Well, you can put a little bit, yeah, okay, let's in there. Start with this. Okay. Okay. Now put some more on top. Actually, okay. you can put the whole stuff on the top whole and then lot. the whole stuff. That's a technical oh. term. This is possibly my favorite job in the kitchen, dolloping frosting. You're on doing a, cake. a good job. Thank you. you are well versed in dolloping. Thank you. I, I like to think I do a good dollop. You do. Thank you, Sarah. If baking isn't for you and you think you can't do it, this is the recipe to change your mind. It is a chocolate lava cake. It only takes about five ingredients. It all gets whipped up very quickly. And best of all, you are left with chocolatey, gooey mess. What more could you want on Valentine's Day? This, ladies and gentlemen, is my chocolate lava cake. And it is super simple to make. It starts off by melting some butter. And I have a pan of simmering water with a bowl sitting over it. This butter is going to melt down, and when it's melted, we're going to stir through some chocolate. But first, while we're waiting for that to melt down, I'm going to whisk up three eggs with some caster sugar. Now, by doing this and whisking it up so they're light, pale, and fluffy, you're going to add this lovely frothiness, which is essential to get that molten interior to your cake. So, nice fresh eggs, some sugar, and we're going to be in business. In with some caster sugar, and you're gonna whisk this up. It's gonna change in its texture completely. It's gonna become light, pale, and fluffy. This looks great now. It's kind of at a moussey texture and it's perfect for adding the rest of the ingredients. I have my melted butter right now, so I'm gonna turn off the heat. I'm gonna take it off the heat, add the chocolate to it at this point, and the residual heat in the melted butter is going to melt down that chocolate. So stir that straight through, give it a second just to warm through, and then stir it until it's completely melted and you have a thick mixture. Now, the reason I'm doing this is that I don't want to incorporate too much heat into this frothy mixture. Otherwise, the heat in this bowl is gonna cook the eggs in this bowl and you will be left with a mess. And nobody wants a mess. So just mix that through and look at that chocolate melting down. This has melted down beautifully. And now that it's a little bit cooler, I'm just gonna pour this straight into that egg mixture. This is chocolatey, it's velvety, and it's moussey, baby. Now that I've got it all in, give it a good mix up and just incorporate it all together. This is where chocolate meets eggy sugar mixture and everything gets good. As soon as it's just mixed, I'm gonna get the mixer out and we're gonna fold through a very small amount of flour. Now, to get this wonderful velvety lava interior, you're only gonna add about two to three tablespoons of flour, and it's important when you're adding a very small amount of flour into a very liquid mixture that you sieve it in, because otherwise you're gonna be left with lots of lumps and bumps, and you don't want that. The great thing about this pudding is that you can add a whole host of different ingredients. Nuts go really well in here, fruit works really well, a little bit of orange zest would work really well. It kind of give you that sort of chocolate orange taste, which is pretty good. Now that the flour is sifted in, I'm just gonna take a spatula and I'm gonna fold this through. This is essentially the same recipe I make for little mini molten chocolate cakes, but it works super well in this big baking dish as a dessert that everyone can dig into. So fold that through. And that is it. Once you have it completely incorporated, this now gets poured straight into a buttered dish. So just pour it on in. It is gloopy and it is moussey. The great thing about this mixture is that it can sit quite happily until you're ready to bake it off. So if you wanna make it ahead of time, by all means do. 
This now goes into a preheated oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 180 degrees Celsius. It's going to cook off for about 20 minutes. You're looking for the outside to be kind of slightly cakey, but the interior to have a nice bit of wobble. So into the oven we go. When this comes out of the oven, you should be left with that cakey exterior, but that beautiful molten interior. And I think the only way to do this is to dive straight in and check it out. So I'm gonna take a nice generous spoonful and get that oozy beautiful pudding. That is exactly what you're after. And all that moosiness that you've got in there is due to all the air you put in when you whisk the eggs and the sugar together. So I have to try some look at that luscious, frothy, tasty, chocolatey goodness. that is ridiculously rich and intense. Dark chocolate hazelnut cake. This is one of the easiest flourless chocolate cakes you will ever come across. But not only is it rich and fudgy, but the best part of this cake is this wonderful chocolate ganache that you pour over the top and sprinkled with toasted hazelnuts. It's an absolute dream. Hi guys, I am gonna show you how to make the best chocolate cake you will ever taste. And the best thing of all is that it is gluten-free. So all you gluten-free fans out there, this is the one for you. Now I started off by melting some chocolate and some butter in a bowl, just over a bain-marie, over a little pot of simmering water. So it's melted through, I'm gonna take it across over here, and now we're gonna mix in all our lovely ingredients. The great thing about this being a gluten-free cake is that there's no flour, and instead, to bind it, I have some ground almonds. So the ground almonds go straight in, alongside a little bit of caster sugar. That goes straight in as well. For a bit of flavor, we've got some vanilla extract. Let's drop in there. And now, because we're kind of giving it a hazelnutty taste, this is a chocolate hazelnut cake, I'm gonna add a drop of Frangelico. And if you haven't tried this stuff before, it's like a, a liqueur of hazelnuts. It tastes absolutely gorgeous, and it's really good to add in here. It's really nice in truffles as well. So about a tablespoon and a bit in here. That should do us. If you don't want to use the Frangelico, don't worry about it, you can just leave it out. Just mix that through, and you should be left with a nice kind of crunchy looking batter. And separate some eggs, just six eggs. It's quite a dense cake, but it's really worthwhile doing. So six large free range eggs go in here, and I'm just gonna separate them out. Okay, so now what I need to do is grab a tea towel from my hands, clean myself down, throw your egg yolks in here and just give it a good mix through and you just want to make sure that it's all evenly incorporated and it's better that you just allow it to cool ever so slightly after it comes off the pan so that you don't get any scrambled eggs in your cake. Nobody likes a scrambled egg cake. That's lovely, evenly combined and now it's on with the egg whites. Egg whites beautifully whipped up, light and voluptuous, just the way you want them to be. And check this out, look, that is the foamy egg white, and it's that that is gonna give us a beautiful lift in this cake. So, transfer this over, get rid of the whisk. And now, what I'm gonna do is use about, I suppose it's about a hefty tablespoon, if not, it's probably a little bit more. But anyway, a good amount like this, stick it in, and at this point, don't worry, just mix it through, okay? Slacken off the mixture with that egg white. And then once it's kind of loose, what I'm gonna do is fold in that lovely egg white. In with the rest of that lovely egg white, just transfer it in. Make sure to get every last bit. And then just fold very, very gently, trying to keep as much air in there as possible, moving the bowl as you go. Look at that serious chocolate cake batter. Ooh, yes. This goes straight into a cake tin, lined with a bit of parchment paper. Look at this. You seriously, I don't know, I don't know about you, but I can't resist a good chocolate cake. And this is a properly delicious little one. And once it's nicely in there, this goes straight into the oven, 180 degrees Celsius, 35 minutes, and you've got a beautifully puffed up chocolate cake. Mm -mm. While the cake is in the oven, I am gonna make a beautiful glaze which can be used for a whole host of delicious chocolatey cakes and bakes. It starts off with some chocolate and some butter, and this goes over our little simmering pan of water. The other ingredients are some icing sugar and some cream. So all I need to do is melt that down. 
Now while this is melting away, I want you to subscribe to the channel. Click subscribe and make sure that you check out more of my videos. Of course, if you want the recipe, check out donaldskiing.com. And of course, leave me a comment below because I want to hear from you. I want to hear the sort of recipes you want to see. Beautiful melted chocolate, icing sugar goes in, and a little drop of cream. And now all I need to do is mix this through. Look at this, beautifully risen and ready now to cool on a wire rack. This cake has now cooled, so I'm gonna loosen it out of its tin. Helps to just run a knife around the sides. And now I'm gonna carefully try and lift it onto a cake stand. And I have my magic cake lifter. So just get that underneath and slide it underneath. And then beautiful, thick, dense chocolate cake. And just slide it very gently over onto the little cake stand. Hey, that wasn't bad going at all. So just pour a good amount, just to start with. And the great thing about this glossy icing is that it drips down the side and it looks absolutely amazing. Wait for it now because this is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. This is a serious chocolate cake. Gluten free, beautiful, chocolatey, all the things you want a chocolate cake to be. And just to finish it off, I'm going to drizzle it or sprinkle it even, with some chopped hazelnuts. Now, these chopped hazelnuts have been roasted, they've been toasted, and they've been chopped, no skins, and just sprinkle that into the center. And you've got that lovely echo of the frangelico in there, and people can see that it's a chocolate hazelnut cake. And now, the best part of making a chocolate cake, the slicing of it, the eating of it, so dig in there. And now, all that is left to do is stick it in your cup. Oh my god, <laughs> that is so, so good. On my travels in Italy, one of my favorite recipes I have picked up and taken along with me and made a countless amount of times, in fact, I make it pretty much for every family occasion, is a tiramisu. And my version is injected with chocolatey goodness. Tiramisu, that Italian classic, a beautiful creamy dessert, and it's so, so easy to make. I'm gonna show you how. This recipe actually comes inspired by those fantastic Italian nonnas who taught me how to make it. So into a uh, mixer, we're gonna use four large free range eggs, and we wanna separate these out. So crack them and break your whites into a mixer like this, and the yolks go into this bowl. These get whisked up now and become light and fluffy. Okay, beautiful voluptuous egg whites into this mixture. So we're gonna add in some of that lovely sugar and with this mixture, I'm now gonna whisk this up until I have a nice kind of, sort of, what is it? Like a, 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 a puffed up egg yolk mixture. That's exactly what I'm after. And it starts off with this kind of very yellow colored mixture and you'll notice by the end of me whisking this, it'll go much, much paler and it's because of the air that you're incorporating in the mixture. You'll also notice that the sugar has dissolved a little bit as well. Check this out now. It has transformed into this lovely, light, pale yellow mixture. And it's this pale yellow mixture which we're gonna add some mascarpone into. Just mix it until you have a nice, smooth mixture. And I'm gonna hit it with a little bit more flavor in here, just a little bit of vanilla extract. If you don't have vanilla extract and you have a vanilla bean, you can scrape out the seeds and it's lovely to get those little flecks of black through it. But all I'm gonna do is add a tablespoon, no, a teaspoon of vanilla extract. When you're folding through or using egg whites, the important thing to do is slacken off the mixture. And by slackening off the mixture, I mean that you want to make it a little bit looser so that it's easier to fold through and keep as much air in there as possible. So just mix that through very vigorously to start with and then we'll add the rest in. Have a look at this beautiful, light, voluptuous tiramisu mixture. And I'm going to set this aside now 
because what we need to talk about is the filling for this beautiful tiramisu. So I've got a dish here and what we're gonna do is layer this up. I have these beautiful lady finger biscuits but I'm gonna soak them with a mixture of cold coffee, good quality espresso coffee, and then some lovely Vinsanto, a sweet Italian dessert wine. If you don't have this, you can leave it out, but it does add great flavor and it's that classic tiramisu flavor that you get from it. So a good glug in here, be as generous as you like. You gotta be quite generous. I should stop now. I'm going to stop. That's enough. Right. So get your lovely ladyfinger biscuits and just layer them in as nice and tight as possible. Okay, so at this point, look, if you want to pre-soak your fingers and put them in layer by layer, that is up to you. But I like to take the cheats way out and to just very, very slowly trickle that mixture over your fingers until they've soaked up the mixture. Right. One beautiful layer of lady fingers. Now we need to grab our mixture, our lovely light voluptuous mixture, and just spread out about half the mixture on the base there. I'm now going to finish it, this layer in the classic tiramisu way by just grabbing a little sieve and using some cocoa powder over it. Just sprinkle that over. Hey, how good does that look? Now all I need to do is finish it off with another layer. Now I know that looks pretty good to start off right now. You could dig in if you wanted to, but I'm gonna finish it off by putting some dark and white chocolate shavings on the top. And that's my little twist on this. What I'm gonna do is just using the back of a sharp knife, or just a normal sharp knife, the blade of a sharp knife, press it up against your waist and just drag the blade of the knife towards you. And what you get left with, if you have a look on the other side of this knife, is these tiny little white or dark chocolate shavings. Very, very tasty and very beautiful. Very little work, very, very tasty. And we're gonna sprinkle these all over the top. So we're gonna finish this off with the dark chocolate first. One to be proud of and one that is incredibly delicious. Have a look at this. Fantastic tiramisu really easy to make and I hope you're gonna try it there you go five brilliant chocolate recipes to get you excited this Valentine's Day and most importantly to impress your loved one and even if you don't have loved one maybe one of these chocolate recipes will help you find one either way enjoy subscribe comment let me know which one was your favorite and I'll see you soon goodbye